in uh, 1998, uh, you were asked by Governor Pataki to head uh, uh, the Long Island Power Authority. Um, you were an obvious choice uh, as having been the energy czar in Washington and having a deep understanding of local politics and, and private sector processes. Uh, did you have any second thoughts about taking on that job? How did you analyze the situation in making the decision to do it? No, actually, uh, it was a challenge, and it was a challenge I really wanted to take on. As I looked at it, it was fixable, uh, and as I said, it was a crisis. Uh, the Long Island Lighting Company, which had built a nuclear power plant, which they could never open, had this huge amount of debt on its balance sheet, and it was rated junk by the rating agencies, and it couldn't invest in generation or anything, uh, so it was defunct and the state had to do something about it. So Pataki asked me to look at it, and I did. He gave me some staff help. The, uh, I w looked at it, I went back to him and told him that the only way to solve this thing was a, a temporary step. Temporary step was for the state to come in and take over the debt and the majority of the company, uh, have hire then Keyspan, another company, to. Uh, to run to, to, to run the, the company, run the wires, run the distribution. Right. And we would refinance the debt with tax-free debt, bringing down the interest rates and make the thing hold together financially. Uh, but this it, was a hybrid. It wasn't private. It wasn't public. It was, yeah, it was semi. Yeah. And it was designed to be interim because my recommendation was that we use this opportunity to consolidate Keyspan, which was a Brooklyn Union Gas Company, consolidated Edison, Con Ed in New York City, and also overlapping Nassau County and uh, overlapping in Queens. Into one mammoth downstate utility? Yeah. And so that Still was, privately held or? It was to be privately held with a government component to deal with the debt. Okay. So it, was a, it had to be worked out and we needed legislation, but I was quite sure we could get it. Uh, the politics of putting us to, all this together were, were Unsurmountable. In and what sense? Corporate politics or uh, conventional politics? Con Ed was trying to get rates increased in New York City, and it was always in political difficulty, it was being criticized for service. Uh, it was generally judged that Con Ed was a worse condition than we were, all of which I think could have been fixed and overcome. So Con Ed was not willing to go ahead for political reasons. Okay. The governor was unwilling to push him for political reasons. So we agreed that this would we'd stay with the interim step of what what we have LIPA. Um, in uh, 2000, you you continued your run on Long Island. Uh, somehow, your experience with LIPA wasn't didn't quite cure you of it, uh, and you took on the uh, the task of uh, reforming Nassau County's finances. I mean, here was one of the richest suburban counties in America at a boom time in our uh, financial history, finding itself on the brink of bankruptcy. How did it get there? And then why would you want to have anything to do with it? Uh, well, it was certainly a, a financial challenge, and I mean a challenge of a financial company right. to deal with. Uh, so it was intriguing. Uh, I live on Long Island, so I cared a little bit about the outcome. Uh, I like Governor Pataki, who uh, asked me to do it. I like working with him. I trusted him. Uh, he asked me to take a look at the problem. I did. I came back and told him that the, the county, which had a Republican county executive, uh, was being mismanaged and that we really needed to get the state involved to, to fix it. We put together a formula which... Oh, who's we? Who else besides you I were had, involved uh, in this? I brought in pro bono, Goldman Sachs, uh, and uh, uh, and they're municipal people who are used to these problems. And New York State provided me with some help from particularly their budget department. And we looked at the various ways to approach the problem. It was clear that we needed a control board, but in this case, a control board light, which means we w didn't have to con approve every single contract and take complete control of the county. Right. We had modest authorities, but enough to get the job done. We had to approve the county's budget. 
And uh, so it was more than bully pulpit. You yeah, actually had yeah, some we had we had teeth. We had teeth. And more importantly, because the crisis was so deep, we had the backing of Republicans and Democrats at the local level, at the state level. And we had the backing of the local newspaper, Newsday. County Executive Swazi was a Democrat. He initially resisted us, and but the weight of all these other institutions behind us made him crack. So we had to cooperate with us. We, we, in the end, we became partners and worked to work together. But a city county executive doesn't much like to have somebody looking over their shoulder sure. that works for the state. I can understand that. Now, what were the problems? Again, we had the wealthiest suburban county in America, certainly one of the top three, at a at a a very robust time in our economy, and yet they were failing. Was this something that was endemic to Nassau County, its structures, its, uh, its politics, or was this uh, a canary in the coal mine, uh, uh, a bellwether for uh, problems that local governments were going to be seeing uh, a few years later? It was uh, a problem that local governments had seen before, right. were seeing then, and saw a lot years later. It was very simple. It was spending more than it was had an income, and uh, politicians who, who, uh, who kowtowed to particular, particularly labor unions, uh, in order to get their support for either re-election to that job or to their next ambitious level. That's I've seen it a hundred times, and uh, I don't blame the unions because right. the unions do what they're supposed to do. They try and get support for their membership, but I do blame the politicians who actually right. buy uh, their votes. Well, the other side of that political equation was that you had a county executive, like a lot of <laughs> political leaders, who wanted to say he cut or froze property taxes, but he wanted to do it without having to actually cut expenses. And the only way you can do that is either through fiscal gimmickry or borrowing. Is this obsession to be seen as a tax cutter uh, kind of thing that is getting us into trouble, not only locally, but perhaps even on the national level. Uh, you know, ideologists on the left like to think that. Uh, the fact is, you've got to, the, the biggest problem in, in most counties and municipalities is, uh, is pensions. And that's years and years and years of giving mm -hmm. more than you're earning. <clears throat> and you can't do it. I mean, you can't just and put a blind eye to the fact that you can't afford to do these things. You can't afford this kind of contract with the local police. The Nassau County Police were criticized, uh, particularly the media. They didn't do anything wrong. The, the union head, who has become a good friend of mine, uh, he didn't do anything wrong. He did what he was getting paid for. But the politicians, they, they gave, gave way to good discipline in order to win the favor of the unions to get reelected. Therein lies the biggest problem going forward. There are other issues, but certainly freezing taxes without looking at the real world uh, contributes to it. But that's not the biggest contributor. You can discipline taxes and at the same time keep financially healthy, uh, but it's the structure of municipalities oftentimes just doesn't let that happen because, as I say, in place are pensions that will kill them.